I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, my parents were not involved actively in church when I was growing up, but they always shared um, about Jesus, about God with me. So I, I, me and my brothers, and I thought I was a Christian. Um, however, I reached the point when I was in college, my freshman year, and I met a group of believers there. And since I thought I was a Christian, they, you know, they got a hold of me and we uh, got together. I met with them, but I realized I wasn't, I, fe I didn't feel part of the group. I, I just thought I was less spiritual than them, but I prayed one day uh, for God to give me more faith. That's all I remember uh, that could be close to a, asking Jesus in my heart. So I didn't do the traditional prayer, but I know that after that prayer, God did something. He changed me. He, he gave me, He made me a new person. And I could feel, I could see, I could understand things differently about God. He, he made me a new creation. I know that's the point, and it was a process. It wasn't, it wasn't a day when I, it was a process. I, that change happened gradually, and I felt a desire to know more about God, to share the love of God with others that I had never felt before. When I look back, I realize that a lot of times that God is working in my life, in my circumstances, in the people around me, I don't, I don't realize it that well at that moment. But when I look back and I, I see the amazing things that God has been doing, when I went to college, I was there studying um, English. Uh, I was studying to become a translator and because that was the only thing I thought, I realized I wanted to do in life. That, the only thing I cared about learning was English. I didn't want to be anything specifically. I just wanted to learn English. So uh, that's what made me decide to choose to go to college. And uh, I took, I got a degree in English. I didn't realize that it was God preparing me for what was coming up. The reason why my Husband said eyes on me in the first place was because I could speak some English. So that's funny. He really loved languages and he he noticed me and we the first thing we did was becoming friends and talking about talking in English all the time. We decided to have children and we have a little boy and my husband says, I think we should speak English to him. So Nicolo is born and we're speaking English to him. We talked to a friend of ours who was a psychologist. Uh, and we asked, is this going to do good or bad to the kid? He said, as far as you only speak English, you can do that. You, you just have to be careful with confusing him, like speaking two languages at the same time. So we decided for the first five years of his life to speak only English, my husband, Andy and I, and then the rest of the people around him would speak Spanish. And he was, it was pretty amazing what we saw the little boy uh, what we saw what the little boy was able to do with the languages. But then he started kindergarten. It was very hard to go do school in English, so I gave up. My husband never gave up, but it was, it was not as strong in him. So it was our broken English that we passed it on to him, not even realizing what God had in plans ahead. Because after years of my husband being resistant to the system there, he decides to leave. He would never hide his thoughts. So it was a dangerous place to be if you were not going to be careful. So uh, we decided to make, uh, apply for different systems and different ways to get out of Cuba, and all of them failed. But one day we get a call from a Canadian friend of ours who has a business in Canada and they needed some assistant. And he calls me and says, Mirna, are you willing to come and work uh, for me? It'll be six weeks in Canada, two, we two weeks in Cuba, just you for two years at least. And he, I told him I was gonna think about it, but I, it was out of a 
quest, uh, it was not even something to consider for me because that meant to be away from my family for that long. I was not going to do that. My, my husband always said that if we were going to leave Cuba, it would be all of us at the same time and, um, and not uh, one before the other. For some reason, we found ourselves bringing up this conversation over and over and deciding to talk and think about it. So the, the, the idea then came up that what if this is God's door opening up to us and we don't want sh to shut the door ourselves with our decision. Let's say yes and let God decide if it's okay or not. And I found myself in less than two months, in less than a month I had the visa and in less than two months I was in Canada. It was six months there um, without my family. But God worked in such a way that those six months was the time that took for us to get all our paperwork ready. Because as soon as I stepped in to Canada, the people at immigration that were checking my visa asked me about my family. I said, why is your family not with you? I said, I have a work contract that is just for me, it's not for my family. And they said, but your visa allows your family to come. So I had done all this paperwork for myself, but I, we didn't know that visa would allow me to come with my family. In less than a year, I had them with me. The, the final goal for my husband was never Canada, it was the US. Plus, I have my family here. First time I got individually to pray uh, about that specific request of uh, if we should go or not to Canada, uh, I heard, I felt, it was a voice in my head that said yes. I did not want to accept it. I thought it was my thoughts, but it was again so the next day. And it was always, every time I got to pray for that, I had the confirmation that it was a yes. So God gave us the assurance that we would say yes to this. Uh, once we are in Canada, we, uh, we realized that we could not be there for too long, several reasons. But as I am there, and that's not something I thought about until later, I had the certainty, and I haven't told this to many people, I had the certainty in my heart, and I can remember the place I was looking at when I had that thought come into my mind, that I was going to come to, this, to the U.S. and teach Spanish here. So that blows my mind to think back and know that God did that. Um, then we get here and we are, uh, we, we have friends that we had previously met in Cuba, but we, had, we were not expecting anything from them. I cannot count God's benefits and the way he has poured into our lives to provide for us since we got here. He has used several people in several ways and we are just amazed. Right now, God is taking me through the process of teaching me to listen to his voice and follow him. Also, to trust him regardless of the circumstances. Because um, sometimes uh, we, we may face challenges, we may face things that look impossible, but over and over again, God comes and through his word, he speaks truth to me. My circumstances, my the things that are going on might not be uh, very steady, but God is. So He is teaching me to put all my confidence, my future, my, my rest in Him and Him only. Because it's God, everything already set out for us. I am a follower of Jesus and this is my testimony.